clouds come floating into my life, no longer to carry rain or usher storm, but to add color to my sunset sky. By Ravindranath Tagore. Mini, a five-year-old girl who never wastes her time being silent. Since she has learned to speak, she has never stopped talking. Her mother would often scold her, but her father would adore this quality. Mini is an inquisitive child. She is curious about everything, literally everything. So ask her only companion, her father, who is a busy man working on a novel. One day, Mini reaches her father, his hero, and heroine are in a great suspense. Mini came to ask some questions like why their gatekeeper Bhola calls a crow Kaua instead of Kak, which is a Bengali name for crow. Before her father could reply, she would ask another question, then another. Ha! Huh. So he told her to go out and play, but Mini sat down below his desk in front of the window from where only the road could be seen and started playing an imaginary game. Suddenly, leaving her imaginary game, she started yelling, Kabuliwala, oh Kabuliwala. Mini's father, being concerned, also looked at the heavy, bulky Kabuliwala, a man from Kabul. He was wearing usual Afghani loose clothes and a turban around his head. And he had a sturdy sack on his back and a few boxes of grapes in, in one hand. As the Kavuliwala looked behind to see who was calling him, Mini soon hides thinking that his huge bag carrying living children and the man smilingly saluted at the window, where her father too was standing. Mini's father could not resume his novel writing work, so he decided to buy some dry fruits from Kabuliwala and give it to Mini. But soon he engages into conversation with Kabuliwala about the Russians, the English and also about other policies of the government. Later when it was Kabuliwala's time to leave the place, he inquired about Mini. But Mini ought not to come from her father's back. She was clung to her father refusing to greet the Kabuliwala. This is how they meet. After a few days, Mini was found chatting and laughing with Kabuliwala. And Kabuliwala was patiently listening to her. Her father thought that it was the first time Mini is having a perfect listener like her father. Her father noticed that her end of the sari was stuffed with all dry fruits and nuts. So his father handed eight panna to him, to the Kabuliwala. First he was not ready to accept it. Later he seemed to accept it, but Mini's mother found that the money was with Mini, which was quietly returned by Kabuliwala. Her mother always feared that the Kabuliwala would sell off Mini to Afghanistan, while her father would watch their bonding getting stronger day by day. Mini would ask Kabuliwala, out, out of curiosity, what is there in his hefty bag? He would reply that he is carrying elephants. Kabuliwala would tease her by asking, Khoki, won't you ever be going to your Shoshurbari, father-in-law's house? Mini would say, Ami Shoshur ke marbo. She will kill her father-in-law. Soon it is January and it is time to re return to Kabul. This was the time when he would collect all his debts from his debtors, but he would still manage to meet Mini. If he could not come in the daytime, he would come in the evening to meet Mini. A few days later, Mini's father was busy at his desk when suddenly he heard a rally from the streets. To find out what was happening, he notices Kabuliwala, with his hands tied up, being dragged away by two policemen. He rushed out to inquire about what was happening. When he reached, he saw that Kabuliwala's shirt front was blood-stained, 
and that one of the policemen was carrying a bloodied knife. The Kabuliwala had stabbed one of his customers on refusal of payment. He was planning on going home after collecting all his debts and now he didn't know when he would get to see his daughter again. At the trial, the judge gave him 10 years of imprisonment for killing that man. He spent his time thinking about Mini and his own daughter back in Kabul. After several years, the Kabuliwala was released from jail. And the first thing he did after getting released was to go see Mini. A lot had changed in his absence and, to his surprise, the day he arrived at Mini's house was actually Mini's wedding day. Apparently, Mini's father was not very pleased about seeing the Kabuliwala on this auspicious day and asked him to leave the premises. The Kabuliwala insisted on meeting Mini but couldn't change the father's mind so he offered to leave him some raisins for Mini. Before leaving, the Kabuliwala showed something to Mini's father, a scruffy piece of paper with the handprint of a child. The handprint was of Kabuliwala's daughter, whom he had left in Kabul. Seeing that piece of paper, Mini's father melted and immediately called for Mini. Mini arrived in wedding attire, covered with embellishments. The, Kab Kal the Kabuliwala was shocked to see that Mini had grown into a young woman and realized how he had missed his own daughter's childhood too. Mini's father understood the Kabuliwala's condition and offered him enough money to get back to Kabul to reunite with his daughter. He set aside some wedding expenses to arrange money for the Kabuliwala. Even Mini's mother extended the money which she saved for Mini's wedding ceremony. They were able to sympathize with the Kabuliwala and how it felt to long for one's long separated child.